in five, four, three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? This is that OG Genius Braincast with just me and Joe today. Hello, my Fuck people. A guest. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, dude, let me tell you guys something. Like, you know, people think that podcasting is like the easiest thing on earth. It's and, not. And uh, there are a few episodes of the Genius Brain Project that I'm not going to upload because a couple of guests that I brought on and I talked to them too. And I told them straight up, they were boring as fuck. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I could not, I couldn't release it. It, it was, it was weird because p- there are people who arguably have way more interesting stories than I do about yeah. my life. But if, when they come on, though their in- story is interesting, they can't talk. Yeah. They can't tell a story. Talking, talking's an art, man. Yeah. It's like you ask them a question and they'll be like, yeah. yeah it's like, motherfucker, ex- elaborate. <laughs> yeah. People want to hear the story. Yeah, it's like, bro, <laughs> I literally brought you on so you could tell that story and they just go, yeah, man, and it sucked. Uh, like, you know what oh, I think happens? I think, I think people get self-conscious because mm-hmm. I know a lot of entertaining people off camera. Yeah, but yeah, But then yeah. when the camera turns on, they just like... They get all small and shit. Mm-hmm. Like Alex like that. You know Alex? That yeah, fucker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's so crazy, right? He's like, when the camera turns on, he turns into this shy little boy. And then when it turns off, he's saying every racial slur on earth. <laughs> <laughs> even, even against his own people, you know? So when I, when I first met Bart and Joe back in the day, um, they kept on talking about this guy named Alex, right? Or Alec. And I... It was to me, he was like a Greek mythology because there were stories about him, but I've never, ever seen him. And so one time, so this is back in the day when I didn't have my own office and I was just working out of my apartment, which I am doing now anyways. But Bart texts me and I'm in the middle of doing something. And I I forgot who I was with, but I told that person, hey, I got to go. Something important came up. And the thing that important thing that came up was that Alec was in town. Yeah. And then he came to the office. (laughs) Yeah. And it was so fucking funny because I when Bart I think Bart when he tells his crazy stories he's actually giving you the soft version of who that person is yeah because he's way more intense in real life yeah he is so the moment I walked in the first thing I hear this fool say so Joe comes up to him Joe goes yo what's up Alex it's been a long time I haven't seen you right he goes how's your daughter he goes why you trying to fuck her (laughs) it's like dude this guy's fucking crazy and he goes you gotta wait till she's 18 though at least (laughs) This dude is fucking fun. We, then we went to go like Korean pl- barbecue, Korean yeah. barbecue, and then yeah. we went to go hoop another day after that. And this fool just starts playing ball in his fucking bare feet. Yeah, no, no shoes. <laughs> the dude is so fucking funny, man. It's funny because his family is like literally mega millionaires, maybe mm-hmm. even a billionaire. Like they work and they make like chips for fucking Microsoft and all this shit, right? So he comes oh, from money, but Such his a parents, hillbilly. but his parents don't give him any. Yeah, oh. yeah, and he's just a straight like hillbilly because that's the culture of his parents. They're just straight hill Asian hillbillies. That's fucking crazy. And then I heard like in their language, they um I, I hear it translated when I went over. They're just they just talk shit all day to each other. His mom, he he talks about his mom's saggy titties and all this stuff. That's so fucking funny. And and to paint a better picture of this wonderful uh legendary creature, he imagine like a fat sumo wrestler that <laughs> One, he thinks he's buff and not fat. And he's bald. He has these chubby Buddha cheeks, right? Really big cheeks. But he has black two front teeth from fucking smoking so many cigarettes. There's this video on YouTube. I don't know if it's still up. But it's a video back in the day. So he used to actually be Bart and Joe's manager. (laughs) Yeah, we we let him play the role of manager. It was was funny because it was a video. (laughs) And it was when you told me about him thinking that he's really buff. And it's you making fun of him because he has a pull-up bar. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, bitch, you don't even use that shit. (laughs) He had a pull-up bar. He's so fat, he can't even do a pull-up. You know what the funny thing is, too? He would put his <laughs> arm next to Bart uh-huh. and fucking flex and be like, hey, Joe, don't you wish your fucking arms were as buff, buff as ours? <laughs> and I'm all looking at it like, bro, that's the same size, but it's just all fat. What are you talking about? That dude was, I mean, when, when I first met him, too, it's, it's so funny how you described how he looked because he just looked exactly like the way you said. And it's, it's funny because... He does live in his own world. He's Humpty Dumpty, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he lives in his own world. It's it's probably a good thing for his self-esteem. Yeah. But at the same time, talk. 
very interesting guy. And I have a, a, another friend too that he reminds me of. And he actually was on this channel. You want to hear a fucking crazy story? So <laughs> back in the day, the, uh, I forgot what bar it was in Sacramento, but I was in a bar at Sacramento and a buddy of mine told me this where he, um, it was for a friend's, uh, what do you call it? A bachelor party, mm -hmm. right? And when they were there, there was a fucking crazy dude that was in the bar and he was trying to hit on um, so it was a bachelor party and a bachelor party combined. They did this com combination thing. They were trying to, he was trying to hit on the bride. And so one of the groomsmen came up to him and said, yo, she's, she's the bride. Like she's not single. And this dude kind of got a little crazy, flipped out and he bear maced the whole fucking oh, bar. No. He had a can of bear mace. Wow. So if you guys don't know what bear mace is, bear mace is like regular mace, but it throws out this huge, huge cloud. Yeah. It's, it's. It literally works on bears. You could look it up on YouTube and you'll see this this can, this gigantic can that sprays out this huge uh, uh, cloud of just death. So crazy thing was, I actually found out later on that that person who did that was my buddy Rob. Oh. So Rob has his habit of when, so I've seen this dude literally come up to a girl in the middle of a street and he'll be like, what's up, baby? What's your name? And she'll be like, no, I'm okay. And this will put his hand underneath her skirt, didn't touch anything. Pulls it back and he goes, yeah, it smells like fucking fish. Ugh, and he just walks away. What He's fucking, fuck? fucking weird. And I use the friend, I use the term uh, friend very lightly. <laughs> Shout out to Rob though. This guy is fucking odd, man. This is, this is some like low key kind of rapey level the, weird. You know, it's not even, it's just he's so dumb. He doesn't understand. I want to say, Rob, you're not dumb, dude. You're just fucking weird, bro. Like you just, you don't understand normal social context. So check it out. Mm. So uh, we, our buddy of ours just recently got married, right? This dude uh, <laughs> shows up to the wedding and uh, <laughs> he has his own camera there, right? And he comes up to the bride and groom and he goes, so when are we going to do your guys' wedding photos? What the fuck? He is not the set photographer. <laughs> and then he looks at him, my buddy looks at him and he goes, what? Who the fuck told you you were going to take the photos? <laughs> like, what are you saying right now? <laughs> and he goes, he goes, so when are we going to fucking do this photo <laughs> shoot? I've been waiting all day, man. <laughs> He's like, I never asked you to. And then another friend of ours was coming from the airport and he called him to go pick him up. And he goes, hey, man, I can't pick you up. I got to take these photos. <laughs> He's like, nobody's asking you to take the fucking photo. So he gave go himself him his up. own job <laughs> at the wedding? At the wedding. That's like me walking up and saying, damn, man, I got to do this favor. I'm DJing fucking David's wedding and shit. Yeah, that's really It's like, it the fuck? <laughs> and then he's so fucking odd. Um, when he showed up to the wedding, he dressed very nice, like decent, right? And then at the reception, this fool dresses in a tuxedo at the fucking reception. And it is the trashiest looking tuxedo I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it looks like a tuxedo that you've seen in an Acme cartoon that a that a street rat wore with a tin can on his head, just tattered as fuck. And I, I didn't even find such a dirty tuxedo. I don't fucking know. And I looked at him. I was like, bro, you looked good at the wedding. Why did you change your outfit into this <laughs> ugly ass tuxedo? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Why well, he had to change his outfit for the reception? He changed it for the reception. Why did he just a, stay in his outfit? I don't know. Into a worse outfit, and he somehow made. He's the first person I know that ever made a tuxedo look bad. Why would you do that? He's he's a fucking odd character, dude. Wait, the, was he even a groomsman? No. Why would he switch his I outfit? don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't fucking he know. He was like, is he the bride? Like, oh, you know, I'm going to a fucking wedding. I better, I better fucking switch my outfit for every occasion. Dude, there's so many weird stories I have of him. Like, he's he, he does his weird habit of... <laughs> of so, uh, he, he tries to do this thing where... Before somebody can make fun of him, he likes to make fun of himself. Uh -huh. But when people do that normally, it's a defense mechanism and it makes other people laugh. Yeah. But when he does it, it comes out of nowhere. So <laughs> one time him and a bunch of our other friends came from Sacramento and they were chilling in my apartment, right? And uh, when they were about to leave, we couldn't we couldn't find where Rob is, right? And then we're like, hey, Rob, where are you at? We're all about to bounce. And he just comes out of nowhere and he does awkward shit like this. He'll come out and he'll go, well, I guess I just appeared at a fucking fat air. Fat air? <laughs> <laughs> and it just goes dead silent. Like are nobody, fat nobody was gonna call you fat, bro. What are you saying right now? This guy's <laughs> so weird. He's like, they, they're making, they're, they're making invisibility jokes because I'm fat. Yeah, it's like, bro, you're not even making the right mind connections. Yeah, like, what are you saying right now? And this dude, is he is he fat? Yeah, he's fat. Oh, so he just automatically just starts bashing himself. Nobody said anything about his weight, and this fool. Just you had him on. 
No, I haven't had him on. Oh. But if he does come here, I'm going to have him on because he needs to explain himself, especially about that bear mate situation because yeah. I haven't uh, talked to him about that shit. We- but, <laughs> and even in that same day, he does some weird shit like this. I uh, This is when I just started YouTube. <laughs> that he goes, yo, David, I want to support you, man. And uh, I just want to let you know that I'm going to follow you on everything. I got you, right? This like, mother- like and He this- follows you on Instagram, Twitter, everything. Yeah, and I'm like, bro. How are you going to follow him? You have a fucking flip phone. He had a flip Nokia phone. Oh, dude. he was going to go on a computer. <laughs> no, he was talking about on his phone. I was like, bro, who the fuck are you going to follow on this brick? What are you talking about? He goes, oh, I have my ways. <laughs> I'm like, dog. Stupid. And this was only like five years ago. Oh, so what the fuck is he doing with like a Nokia flip phone? Well, the, the intent was there. The, the intent support was, there. was there. He's just a really odd character. <laughs> Let me follow you with I pull out a fucking pager. <laughs> yeah, and he pulls out this old What ad. the fuck? The guy's odd. This podcast is brought to you by Skillshare, baby. If you haven't heard me talk about Skillshare before, well, that's probably because you're missing out on this awesome deal. So first of all, if you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. You can take classes in everything from photography, creative writing, and a whole bunch more. So whether you're returning to a long time passion project, challenging yourself to get outside your comfort zone, or simply exploring something new, Skillshare has classes for you. Now for me, I'm all about lifelong learning. Just because you're done with school, just because you're done with college, it doesn't mean that you should stop yourself from learning new things and trying new things out. Um, I I believe that a lot of people out there think that education stops after uh, your traditional education, but it never really does. And that's what makes things exciting for me. I have a lot of hobbies and there's a lot of things that I want to learn. And I actually go uh, to Skillshare to pick up on a lot of these hobbies. Like for example, uh, I love video editing. And Skillshare has a bunch of tutorials for that as well. And I've been using that for a while and it's been helping out a lot. So check it out. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for my listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right. Skillshare is offering Genius Brain listeners two months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash brain. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash brain to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash brain. Um, anyway, so for today's topic that everybody wanted us to talk about, and it's been kind of dated because the special has been out for a bit, but um, the reason why I didn't want to originally talk about this because number one, everybody was doing it, and then I just wanted to kind of sit with the the stand up special first, and then see what everybody was saying, mm. just so I could form an opinion about it. But um, obviously, if you guys know the king of comedy himself, Dave Chappelle, put out his special Sticks and Stones, and it really ruffled a lot of fucking feathers. It's crazy because I didn't I didn't realize that it it was worse than the other one. The fucking killing me softly. Yeah, I mean he's. I mean, it's it's weird, right? Because when I watched it the first time, I I cracked the fuck up. Yeah. And the great thing about Dave Chappelle's stuff is that when I watched it the second, third, and fourth, it got funnier and funnier and yeah. funnier. Yeah. And because there's a lot of stuff in those jokes that I didn't really get um, at the first passing, because I was laughing. Through You're talking it. about killing me softly. Or yeah, or? because I I laughed through. I was laughing through a joke. Yeah. I didn't get to hear the other stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, I watched yeah. it two or three or four times, and I think those are the best stand up specials where you can he's, watch it continuously. It's funny. Yeah. Right. And so. When I was watching the stand-up set, um, I was looking at... There was like something on Rotten Tomatoes where it got a terrible fucking review. It was at 0%. Yeah, it was at 0 fucking yeah, percent, dude. With the, the day that it came out. That's fucking crazy to or me. Like, yeah. And so the, the, the controversy behind that is with Dave Chappelle's stuff, if you haven't seen it, if you have, you probably live under a fucking rock. But it's... Um, you know, he says a lot of stuff that in today's society wouldn't be acceptable, right? Yeah. Because any topic I feel like if you're if you're not making a joke about how dumb people are for attacking the LGBT community or you're not championing that thing and you're not making comedy light of people on the other side, yeah. it's gonna be considered as hate speech. You're ignorant, you're not here with the times. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's what was happening. I was reading a lot of tweets where people were like, even some comics were coming at him. They Damn. were like, you're, 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 you're dated. You don't know how to make good jokes anymore. That shit like, was funny though. All you do, all you do <laughs> is like funny. shock value shit. And that shit didn't shock me one bit though. It didn't shock me either. Yeah. I don't know anyone that was mad with the fucking special. Yeah. You, did you? Not my friends. I know, I know of a, a really close friend of mine who was dating a girl who watched it and said, she said he had to turn it off. Really? Because she was so offended. And guess what? Is she gay? 
<laughs> she, uh, no, she's just she just found a lot of the stuff that he said was very insensitive, and he does not date her anymore. So, <laughs> well, maybe we were surrounded by shit bags because a, everyone I know absolutely loved it. Yeah, fucking loved it. You know what? There's, I mean, <laughs> the interesting thing is, I guess, to what people were saying is like it's very insensitive, right? They said that um, it's it's very dated the stuff that he's talking about, and to them it doesn't make sense. Uh. I guess for me in comedy, it's it's kind of weird, right? And I, I think we can all be a little hypocritical depending on what's being said and how it affects us on our personal experiences, mm-hmm. right? But at the same time, I'll, I'll put it like this and how I see it sometimes is I have to catch myself doing that because if I try to censor comedy based on certain specific things that happen to me, yeah, then I'm, I, I think I'm doing a disservice to comedy, yeah. right? Because comedy, like Patrice O'Neill is one of my favorite stand-up comics that I only found out about him after he passed away, really, and I really started looking at a stand-up, which is sad, but Patrice O'Neill said it best. He goes, when I do stand-up comedy, half the room should be terrified and the other half the room should be cracking the fuck up Yeah, because comedy should be polarizing because you are saying something important. Yeah, I mean, it's a form of philosophy too, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're, uh, you're saying shit that's controversial and you're saying shit that shouldn't be said sometimes and that's why it's funny. Yeah. Like you're, you're tackling issues with things that are taboo and comedy's supposed to be challenging. And I don't I don't know why people don't understand that. Yeah, that was that was the part that kind of throws me off a bit, right? Because I, I do want to preface this. Um, for those who think that, oh, I can't be offended. No, you you a hundred percent should and can be offended, mm. right? It's what you do after that you think should happen because you personally are offended. That's, yeah, you shouldn't counsel someone and shut somebody down if they're not breaking any laws. Exactly. You know? So these are Comedic sets that, yeah, I say 80% found really funny, maybe even 90% or maybe even 95, but that 5% dislike yeah. is speaking up really fucking loud. And yeah. the people who are in that 5% are saying, you should not do comedy now. That doesn't make any sense to me because, yeah, yeah you being offended is 100% in your right and it's not wrong either. It's just the fact that you think that because you are personally offended by something that's a comedic set Mm -hmm. that this person should be canceled and deleted out of this whole world. And he called everything that was going to happen. That's even funnier. Yeah. Because you're, I don't know, it just makes people look more ridiculous that they're mad at the fact that someone made a joke about something. Exactly. And and then they called him out about it. mm -hmm. It's like, the fuck? And on the other end too, um, this is my opinion, if... If there are people on the other side where I read a couple of tweets from comics and they're like, well, you know, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't be offended, blah, blah, blah. It's just comedy. I think that's pretty stupid, too, because yeah, you can't tell someone not to be mad. Exactly. Yeah. So like anybody who watches this and they and they are upset that somebody doesn't like it. I think that's fucking dumb as well, because they are completely in the right not to like it. That's what comedy is about. Yeah. So it's just, it's weird because there's double censorship happening, right? Yeah. It's people trying to censor comedy because it's too harsh, and there are people trying to censor other people's emotions and feelings and telling yeah. them how they should feel about something. And that's not the case either. I think that when comedy goes out, people are allowed to interpret it the way that they fucking want. Yeah, and like you said, they clicked on his face. Yeah. They clicked. Like, that's the, that's the weird thing to me about how shit works now is, like, people are watching the whole fucking thing. Yeah. And then they're getting mad about it. Or they don't even watch the whole thing and they see a snippet being passed around on Twitter. And then from that one little fucking snippet that's taken out of context, they write a whole entire damn fucking opinion piece about it. And it's like, did you watch the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think everyone has every right to be upset. That's fine. But then petitioning to get someone canceled, to get to ruin their shit and not let them like speak in events and things like that. That's what I'm not cool with. It's dumb. It's 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 fucking comedy. Yeah, you, they treat him like he's the leader of the KKK. Like yeah. it's like the fuck. You have a you have a choice to not watch his stuff and yeah. not support him. But there's a huge fan base out there that does, right? And you, you're not going to change that fact. You you really aren't. You, yeah. You know what I mean? And I I don't understand. That's why sometimes when I go to these comic clubs, I see comics who are very app- and by the way, I love going to comic clubs because I just like laughing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm not one of those comics that sits there and just crosses his arms and like that shit's not funny. No, I literally go there to because you're not like competing with them internally like the other Absolutely fucking not, jaded dude. comics. Yeah, I'm trying to laugh my yeah. fucking ass off, man. And there's a lot of great comics, but there's a fat bunch that creates content based on how other people will perceive them. Yeah. They're not really saying what they feel now. Well, but, yeah, because they just want to be famous or some other reason, or yeah. they just want to be liked, right? They don't know how to have an opinion. Exactly. Yeah. Like, 
I, I, you can have an opinion that kind of caters to what people feel, but it, it, feel, it feels very disingenuous when I could tell when people can tell, especially in the crowd, they're just saying these jokes just so they can get the crowd on their side. Yeah, it's 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 weird. It's like you're not saying anything. Yeah, there's there's no content based around this stuff. You're it's a circle jerk. Yeah, it's 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 odd. And like I feel like a comedy club should be a safe space. There's comics who go out there. Safe space to say whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. There's comics who go out there, right? <laughs> and if you look at their set and they say some crazy offensive shit and it doesn't work out, yeah. they take that and on the next set, they tweak it where they're still saying the same thing, but they're doing it in a way where it can be digestible. Yeah. So sometimes, or digested, they, they see it and they go, that was a terrible set. This person's trash. No, that's the comedy club. These are major comics that are going in to work their fucking set. Yeah, I think right now though with recording everything... And then just like putting it online and whatever, like people only have one chance to fuck up, right? Yeah. But they don't understand stand up comedy culture in general. Like yeah. there's comedy rooms and people go to these different comedy clubs because they're of that different culture. Like there's black comedy clubs, there's like hipster comedy clubs or whatever. And you know what you're gonna get that night. Like you're not gonna get a white supremacist that walks in and does like fucking racist jokes all day. Yeah. Like you know, like this comedy club. It's going to have this night, right? Yeah. And then you kind of walk in and 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 you look for that. But then since everything's fucking recorded now, it just goes online and it goes to different crowds that it's not supposed to go to. Yeah. And one of the critiques that I read on it was um, Dave Chappelle's comedy is solely done now just for shock value. And if that's what you thought when you saw that comedy He's special- He's not a shock jock or any of that shit. Because he was saying some funny shit yeah, about Yeah, he constructed stuff. jokes- like, you know, like the whole Louis C.K. thing, right? Yeah. <clears throat> People have made that a similar Louis C.K. joke, just like Dave Chappelle did. But the way he executed it was so fucking funny. Yeah. You know, when he was talking, and he, it was it was him making a commentary about how weak guys are after they come. You know, he's like, you know, you know what a guy looks like after he comes? It was fucking like pancake yeah. batter just dripping off his belly. I know. <laughs> Dude, I was in tears <laughs> laughing at that shit. Because I saw the walrus. I saw the that dude just coming. Yeah, just, oh, out. God. Yeah, it's like, like, <laughs> it is harmless looking. Yeah. And so that's that's the comedy. And then people even came at certain Asian people. They're like, well, why? This is weird, too. When a white person comes to me and says, well, why weren't you offended when Dave Chappelle did the, the Chinese, Chinese joke? Dog, that shit had me fucking dying. And it's because he's not making fun of Asian people. No, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. He's, showing, he's showing you how ridiculous it is to him and why that topic that he was talking about was, is, it comes off to him as funny. Yeah. Right? And so it's-, it's You gotta be a dense dumbass not to understand that. Like, I think it's gotta, it's gotta do something with like IQ and understanding how people communicate. Yeah. Because when people- don't get comedy or they don't get satire. They don't get these other, you know, like there's, there's tricks that are being played. And then there's, um, you got to understand a perspective and whatever. Right. But if it goes over their heads and they're just super literal about things, I really question their ability to think like they might oh, be kind of sure, just dumb. This podcast is brought to you by Vista print. My friends. Now I'm a business owner. And as a business owner, I have some business cards that I always be handing out because I needed necessaries in my life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I own a few food businesses. And on top of that, this podcast as well. And I want to connect to people on an instant without having to worry about them jumbling through their phone and making sure they have my contact. I just pass out my business card. Number one, it shows that I'm professional. And number two, it has my contact information, everything ready to go right there so they can access it whenever they want. Sometimes people just don't want to sit there and punch in numbers in their phone. And if anything, what I can do as a business owner when I'm at Mixers or I need to show people or give people my contact, I have these professional business cards and it shows that I'm really about my business. So <clears throat> if you go on this website, vistaprint.com, you can plug your information and logo into hundreds of fresh designs uh, tailored to your type of company or upload your own original layout. Pick the paper stock style and quantity that's right for you. You can even upgrade to a unique touch like rounded corners, order and receive your cards with free economy shipping as well. Now, Vistaprint wants you to be able to own the now in any situation, which is why our listeners will get free shipping on all business cards and style and in any quantity that you want. So just go to vistaprint.com and enter promo code BRAIN for free shipping on all business cards, any style, any quantity limited time offer so own the now at vistaprint.com promo code 
brain. You support our show when you support our sponsors. There you know? was like I I, <laughs> I say too like we I did this Send Foods episode and I mentioned on a Dumb's podcast was there was this like Korean girl who I did apologize to only because not because of what I said I didn't apologize for the joke that I made I apologized because her feelings were hurt and she was offended. People don't even know the difference, man. Yeah, so. They just you know, want to hear like they they just want to say hear you're sorry so then you're you're wrong to them exactly so this is how literal this human being is so <clears throat> on send foods there's this joke where I go you know Tim is famous right so when somebody walks up in screen and they come up and talk to him I'm like oh that person's trash whatever right and clearly it people ninety nine percent people get it the person yeah. is not trash I'm the trash person exactly that's why it's fucking funny it's funny because it's reversed exactly yeah. right and so this person took everything fucking literal <laughs> oh my god it was these two regular just pretty looking Asian girls yeah and they were just like and I was like look at these floozies right they just they don't look like floozies they just look like regular people that's, that's why it's funny yeah if they were floozies I yeah. wouldn't have said it because it does it's too it's the low hanging fruit yeah it's like calling a grandma a hooker that's it's funny because it's grandma Obviously, she's not a fucking hooker. That's exactly what I said. It was yeah. like it, it. It would have been funnier if it was a grandma. Yeah, you know. And the joke isn't that you're a floozy. The joke is is that I am I'm salty because nobody notices me. Exactly. That is the joke. And this person went on this whole tirade about. And the thing I got really fucking mad at, and the reason I responded to her so negatively. What was it? Where was a tirade on Twitter? Or it what? was on. It was on Instagram, uh -huh. and she goes, "This is what she wrote, and this is the audacity of her." She goes, <clears throat> "Women, are you gonna let David So talk about us women that way?" Like she made it into a sexist thing, and that's why I got mad. Was that she tried to turn it into something where it was like us women against David So. And I'm like, you mean me, David So? So she thinks that you're walking around saying ho, 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 slut, fucking whore. Exactly. Like and so I couldn't, and, and it wasn't even her that's probably, she's that's how literal she is. Wow. So fucking literal, wow. right? And then her friends, she got her friends to tag or guess basically take the post down yeah and there was this one guy that was on there he goes you know what women i don't want i don't I, i'm not gonna let him represent us men i'm like bro it's not gonna get you pussy shut the fuck up dude fucking white knight yeah he was like the white fucking knight dude and it's clearly one of her fucking friends and her sister was going off and i was basically telling her sister was how it dumb like she a is. whole family of dumbasses basically and so they don't understand and most people are like bro the joke isn't about you how do you not fucking understand this yeah and so you know, they're like, well, you took the post down. So you obviously knew you fucked up. I was like, I didn't take the post down. You guys got it taken down. I would have kept that post till this fucking day. Well, you had an Instagram post. Yeah, we had to delete it off the channel and everything because it was a clip in the in the in the send foods and, thing. And she was like hitting up Instagram. Everybody, and dude. And so I apologized to her because I talked to my mom about it. I was like, yeah. why is this situation wrong? She goes, well, your joke isn't wrong. That's what my mom says. She goes, there's nothing wrong with the joke. She goes, but the problem is, is that she became a butt of a joke without her really knowing. And if she doesn't understand it, then she's going to be mad every day. Wise woman. So she was like, just apologize because you hurt her feelings, but don't yeah. apologize for the joke. Yeah. And I was like, you're right. I should apologize for the feeling, for, for her feeling that way. Wow. And, um... Yeah, so I so I apologized to her. I was like, "Yo, I talked to my mom about it, and yeah. I understand that you're hurt. I'm not I'm not taking back the joke, but that's some low IQ shit." So what I'm what I'm getting from this, and I think this is a part of cancel culture and all this stuff, is their interpretation is the only objective thing that exists. Yeah, and no one else's interpretation is. Yeah. Oh, is is right? Yeah. So if she interprets it as you called her a fucking hoe, mm -hmm. a floozy a slut, whatever. And she, she took it as a literal then. And, and she, she thinks that your intent, then this is, this is what's most like lacking is people don't understand intent, right? She thinks your intent was you were trying to um, oppress her. You were trying to talk shit to her. You were just randomly calling her a whore. Like why the, is I don't even know why you would do that. But if she really thought that, then that's why she's motivated to like take you down and all that stuff. Exactly. And it wasn't even horror slut. It was like, look at these floozies. It's floozy. It's exactly. Such, it's such a childish word, yeah. you know? It's like you just. Oh, no, it was, it was uh, look at these loose women. You know what I mean? Oh. It was such like the most mundane way to say it at all. And I, even then I was tiptoeing a little bit, right? And so. Yeah, because I would have been, look at these fucking sluts. And, you know, just to, <laughs> just, <laughs> exactly. Just to prove my fucking point too, right? So oh her God. other friend that was there, right? Yeah. She messaged and said, hey, I don't, like, I get the joke. She goes, I understand, but I didn't like it. Cool. I would have taken it down like that. Yeah. 
because of how honest it was. She wasn't trying to attack me. No, she was she, like, she, hey, it kind of hurt my feelings. I was like, oh, shit, cool. my bad. And so it wasn't even her that got the content removed. It was her friend who said, hey, I understand the joke, but I didn't like it and took it out like that. You know why? Oh. Because it came at me like a person. Yeah. And so I understood the situation, the way she was coming at it. Then, and on, by the way, they're not even friends anymore because she's such a bitch. Really? I, I, we, I found it out after the fact that they're not even friends anymore because um, – she there was this you know there's this long story short but basically you know she got an apology the other one because she came at it very nice yeah and then she got mad at her because she got an apology first so she cut her out see that's just problematic people exactly so that's the individual yeah so people can say what they want that goes to show the character of that human being that's why um I, when people are loud and crazy and and whatever they're like this is the small minority. This is what people don't understand. The people that lead this like crazy cancel culture. The people that represent like like the weird parts of feminism or like different movements, right? Yeah. They're the most craziest fucked up in the head people with real big fucking problems. Yeah. They're like the worst, right? It's not the majority. Like the majority of women in, in, the, in the feminist movement, like they're not these crazy irrational like people that are always looking at fucking men are the enemy same with like every single group i think i feel like most people are just kind of being swayed by the craziest people yeah and i you know just not to sound like too insensitive i can understand when uh the other big part of the reason why i took it down was because uh, i think the her individual she got affected because there was like you know, people in the comments, they were joking around. It's like, look at those loose women. And they just would read it and they didn't understand that they understood the joke too. Oh. So they're, because a human being is so fucking literal, yeah. they're reading to these comments like, oh, now everybody thinks I'm a fucking slut. She's like, because David so called me a fucking it's slut. Like, now the whole entire world thinks I fuck, like, no, for, fuck the, for free. They're making fun of me, dude, yeah. not you. Yeah. You know, but because it's so, once again, too literal. It is. It's just, you can't explain that to a person. Even after it was explained, she still didn't understand. And she goes, I'm glad that you're going to change to be a better person. I'm like, oh, God, dude. Even that, res <laughs> even that response after the apology, it means you don't uh, understand. Uh, you don't understand what 99% of the people understood. So it's like, why, why am I talking to a brick wall? Your feelings were hurt. I should apologize for that, David. It's not even me being a bigger man. That's my fault. It's like you're, you're – You I can't should. convince an idiot. Yeah. Uh, it's. Um, I hope someone – marries her and is patient and can deal with that oh no and the fucking funny thing was is like to me she just looked like a regular pretty korean girl yeah and then a couple of my friends like sent me her instagram shit and it's like her like at a vegas pool just basically getting butt naked <laughs> like i'm not saying that makes you a floozy or a slut or anything but it's maybe, like maybe maybe you uncovered an insecurity maybe she does fuck a lot of guys and she's insecure and she doesn't want to own that maybe you maybe know? that's what it is because yeah. i was so i was so shocked why she was so offended yeah i mean i it, it, i know a lot of like closet like sex lovers that are hardcore you know preachers kids or yeah. christian kids and and they hid the hey they hid the shit out of that stuff you know yeah it's maybe maybe you're right maybe yeah. it was something that she was probably dealing with in her whole life like trying to be this fake like demure like yeah I'm, and then yeah. she doesn't want to you know um have that label because it makes her feel guilty or whatever. Like I'd own it. Like, I, I mean, I guess guys are just a little bit different because it, it, it doesn't do anything, but I'm also a scoundrel. So I don't <laughs> give a fuck about yeah. what people say, but yeah, I guess, I mean, your mom's right, man. If it hurts someone's feelings and it's just causing like negative energy in the air, even if you're not wrong about shit, I think it's just better to kind of like let it go and move on and not have that kind of attention around you. Yeah. Cause I yeah. can't explain it to her. And but it, what sucks is that, um, you know, it's hard as comics to not avoid that unless you're doing some, remember that Joe Wong guy that did the clean comedy. Oh he's, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Was yeah. So funny. But yeah, if you're, unless you're going super clean yeah, and even at that, I'm, I'm I sure, I'm sure they're going to upset somebody. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't know if you notice, like I just recently just stopped caring. Because when, when I started playing this game of who am I offending and who am I hurting? What do you care? What did you stop caring about? I think I just, I got worried about being canceled because of everything that was happening. Yeah. It, it started to affect me. It started to affect me a lot. Damn. And it started to make me not want to do stand-up comedy anymore because um, I felt like comedy sucks now. So why even do it? When when did you start feeling this? I think when all that canceling shit started happening and like years ago, like demonet no, like a couple two three years back. Yeah. Three, I guess that's pretty well back. But it's when like the whole demonetization thing happened and people were saying what content was safe and okay. Yeah, and I 
got a little discouraged to be a part of comedy anymore because um, I stopped liking comics. Yeah. I stopped when I started going to these clubs and people weren't making me laugh because everything was the same shit because nobody wanted to say what how they felt or nobody was bold enough to take not I want to say nobody but I say like a good handful started to become this these comics that didn't want to say or touch topics that were taboo and make it funny mm -hmm. because they were afraid of Back, backlash it started to deter me to want to do comedy more mm -hmm. because then it's like what what group am i a part of now like i wanted to be a part of this group where you know we could take tragedy and turn it into comedy and then when you take that when you put censorship on it and you yeah. take that away from us it's like then what do we have left i don't know and comedy too by the way if most people don't know it's a big coping mechanism it for is. a lot of comics man yeah it's a huge coping mechanism man like i i say this too why is it that you don't want to hear jokes. Like, for example, like remember when Dave Chappelle mentioned the whole Kevin Hart thing, right? Yeah. He, he's basically talking about a situation, like in my situation with the floozy thing. He goes, uh, he, Kevin Hart is talking about taking a dollhouse and breaking it over yeah. his kid's head. How ridiculous. Do you actually thought that this was something he was going to actually do? That's like, as ridiculous as saying, like, I'm a fucking wily coyote your ass. Exactly. And it's like, he doesn't even exist. Yeah. And, and and it's 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 so far fetched, right? But once again, the literal team yeah. takes it as, oh, this guy's gonna abuse his he's child. He's anti gay. Yeah, he's gonna abuse his child if he ever finds out that the child is gay. No, he's making fun of himself for even ha even having thoughts about this this set standard of what manlyhood should be. Exactly. He's making fun of himself. That's the fucking joke. That's why people were laughing. They weren't laughing and cheering because he's gay bashing. Yeah, like, they're not laughing on. at the fact that he's chucking a dollhouse on a child. Yeah, exactly. Although that imagery is funny. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there's a there's I mean, then it would just be plain abuse and it's not funny. Exactly. And <laughs> it's it's so sad that people have to explain their jokes now. Like we have to explain And then people it. put warnings before jokes. Oh man, I hate people, that. And it fucks I have up to the do flow. That. Yeah, there's war and then after the joke, you have to kind of like clear the air to make sure that anyone no one's really there, that never used to happen before. You yeah. just executed. Yeah. It didn't fucking matter, man. And I, I mean, this is kind of how I feel about JK News, too, is that we've really chilled out over the years and we really hold back over the years. Oh, for sure, man. Yeah. And, and you know, for me, like, that's hard for me. That's like it the is. hardest thing. It almost makes me feel like my I have to rip my fucking skin off. Like, it's, it's yeah. so difficult. And that's why I like the whole, you know, because I started a Patreon. Yeah. And the reason why I like that is because I cannot, I, I fucking refuse to do that. Yeah, same here. Like, on our Patreon, I feel liberated now. We yeah. talk what, whatever the fuck we want, man. Yeah. Whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> whatever we want. And the cool thing about that is, too, is that I, and I, and I say this all the time, I'm okay with people not liking it. Yeah. Have an opinion. Just don't go off and go on this tirade about, you know, canceling somebody, your trash or whatever. You could state why you dislike something. That's completely fine. And that's actually what spurs great conversation and great content. Yeah. It's just what you do after you feel that way is the part that fucks things up a little bit. I just, I, for me, it's more about like demon, demonetization, yeah. right? Because like one of the biggest reasons why we censor is not because... um you know, we're worried about what other people will think or if they hurt us or whatever, but it's affecting the livelihood of my crew. Yeah. And once we don't get advertisers, we don't get paid because advertisers are scared to like promote with us because you're just too damn opinionated, you yeah. know? And then it started to affect how people are getting, you know, if they could fucking eat or not. And yeah. I'm just like, Man, for having an unfavorable opinion, for cussing, for doing things that people don't agree with, we're not doing anything illegal or, you know, we're following all the guidelines, but then it sucks because our videos get demonetized or, or some channels get hurt completely only because they have an opinion that doesn't fit with the majority. Yeah. And to that point, too, when, when people say they give examples of brands, right? They yeah. go, these are family friendly brands for example huggies pampers or whatever you know johnson and johnson whatever that company is for for kids products right do fucking thugs not have children too bitch like <laughs> the fuck are you talking you know yeah. what i'm saying everybody got kids fucking bitch boys like everybody got kids yeah. what are you saying what yeah, are you saying what, what does that fucking mean 
Yeah. It's, I would do a Pampers fucking commercial of a dude getting out of prison all tatted up just doing his fucking baby's diapers and shit. Like, motherfucker, we need diapers too. <laughs> that would be a dope ass commercial, man. That would be. Yeah, it, it, like the whole advertisement thing didn't make sense. And I think the biggest point that was proven that money rules everything was the whole Logan Paul situation, yeah. right? Not to bring that up and bash him. I'm not really. But this is a great example of Logan Paul. He did a video recording somebody hanging from a tree. And prior to people making a big deal about it, it was fully fucking monetized. Yep. Fully fucking monetized. Fully. When we put up a video now before the moment it touches the Internet space, demonetized. Yeah. Amazing. And they're still making money. I think that fool made 14 mil last year. Um, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, so if people think that it's a moral ground, it's not money rules everything. Mm -hmm. They're not going to fucking touch their little cash cow. They're not. And and then same with us, right? So we have to adjust be based off money. Yeah. Like, but if people donate to the Patreon, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We can be the same quality content that, that everyone cared about. So for sure, I think that's where the, the world is kind of going to like getting support directly from the fan base. And then, you know, AdSense is going to I feel like it's going to change, though, like the pendulum always keeps swinging. Right. So like there's going to be too much censorship and it's going to swing the other way again. Yeah. Someone's going to break that mold. It's going to keep going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. For, for you, um, because oh, you started your whole Jomalian Academy. What's that about? So uh, Jomalian Academy actually is because, well, for one. I mean, you know me, like I've been burnt out and I haven't been posting on my personal channel. I put all my efforts into JK and other things. And when it came to my own thing, um, vlogging wasn't as fun as it used to be. Yeah. And I actually like vlogging, man. Like I never did it for work. Like I yeah. like going on trips, vlogging, capturing moments. And I actually would rewatch those vlogs when I got home. It makes home. you feel good. Yeah. And yeah. then I would watch yours and then like Bart's and then I would watch the different perspectives. Right. But then... <clears throat> The moment that I started having like too much work on my plate, like all my vlogs became, I'm so fucking stressed out because I'm working this or that. And it's like literally my chance to vent. And then, you know, relationships in reality are ups and downs, right? So if I'm going through a hard time with Jess, I'm not the type of person to be like, hey, what's up, guys? Our relationship's oh, fucking absolutely awesome. absolutely not. We'd be fucked. No, I'm the guy to turn on the camera and be like, fucking shit. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, wanna, I don't want to bring that energy. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And it's it's crazy. And um, so, yeah, if if we're not going to a good time, like, I, I don't feel right vlogging in the house around her because that also disrespects the relationship and the integrity of it all. Yeah. So um, that kind of brought me into this place where I was a... I was I had a weird relationship with my channel and I lost the passion behind it and I would post from time to time, but it just wasn't the same again. And then I started thinking about, you know, basically on, on Genius Brain, you know, when we had Joey over and then yeah. sometimes I talk about finance and I talk about other things. A lot of people keep asking me questions about like. Oh, how do I do this with my fucking bank or my credit card? Or like, how do I save money? And there's like super basics, right? And I started thinking about the majority of the world and we're not taught like normal shit, like, like normal life schools. That's that, that skills that school should be teaching you, like how to fucking balance your fucking bank account. Like, like basic shit. Like if I'm making this much money, I shouldn't be spending this much money, but they yeah. don't know how to budget. Right. Like. People don't even know what APR, interest rate, all that shit in a credit card is, but they sign up for it, they fucking overspend, and they go, holy crap, now I owe this money, and I get charged extra money, what's going on? Oh, that's fucking great, dude. Yeah, that's so actually then, pretty awesome. Jamalian Academy is literally a school about shit that they should have taught you in school, or just yeah. life skills. So on there, the way I'm creating these programs, it's really a voting system, so people that are part of the uh, Citizens of Jamalia page... I just like have like kind of a form there where they go, hey, I want to learn um, basic finance or how to make money or whatever. And then throughout this whole list, I'll just see whatever's the most popular and I'll create that. And then that is giving me energy to create stuff back on my vlogs again to where there's a purpose behind like it's almost like now I remember what what it meant to say, like teaching good things in a bad way. Yeah, because I do enjoy like whatever I learned to package it through comedy and fun and lifestyle. And like, I think that's what I've been doing throughout my whole entire YouTube career is like, whether I'm doing JK news, JK party, JK films, it's always a message that I'm packaging through like entertainment. Yeah. 
And um, now I have that like purpose again to where, oh, I want to just like teach dope shit, but then yeah. like meaningful shit that's going to upgrade the lives of my fans, you know? Yeah. Yep. That I mean, the reason why I like that is because I think that there's a lot of people out there who are afraid to say, I don't know these basic exactly. things. And so when yeah. we have conversation, you, and it's I, embarrassing. When I say a lot of people, I'm talking about me in my early 20s because I, yeah. I didn't know this type of stuff. And people would mention credit card shit, APR, all this other stuff. And I would just nod my head and act like I knew everything. Yeah, and then right? you open up the fine print and you're just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, what the fuck happened? It's like, yeah. how come my credit card bill isn't going down? I've been paying this off every month. And I yeah. don't know about these things because of the interest, right? I don't know that... I didn't know that paying off your credit card immediately is for sure. It's way better than, you know, holding on to like, there's just so many things that you just don't fucking know that I wish I was taught. And it's stuff that my parents didn't communicate to me as well. And yeah. sometimes maybe even my parents didn't know. And they're just kind of winging it too. And then they're embarrassed, but all this stuff is, um, it's free. Yeah. Cause I, I just want to, you know, it's like my way of giving back. Cause my fans have watched and helped me basically live my dream. Right. So it's like, what can I do to improve their lives? And so I'm just putting money into all of this to just keep it going. And so it, it, it really, like, I've been actually doing this for the past year and a half. Yeah. Um, and I first came out with a program called How to Find Your Passion because a lot of people don't even know what their passion is. And I feel like there's already a lot of stuff out there on how to pursue your passion. But a lot of people don't even know what their interests are or they're just yeah. like, I don't even know where to start, right? Yeah. So I created that, had a couple thousand students. I actually charged for it, but something that something just didn't sit well for me. Cause I was like, I feel like I'm being like those self-help guys and that's not what I'm in here for. Like, I just want to entertain, but also like improve the lives of people. And even though I made money on it, I was like, how do I do this in a way where more people can see it. So I just decided to like redo everything and just give out these things for free. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. There's just, yeah, that whole, I don't know thing is, is a really, uh, it's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of adults because it makes you seem very incompetent. And it's embarrassing. It's yeah. very, it's very much embarrassing, man. And it's hard to be, it's not easy to be somebody who doesn't get embarrassed easily. Right. Yeah. That that's okay with having flaws and, and faults. Right. Because even in that situation where, um, where I had apologized to that girl, even though she didn't, she's, I mean, listen, if she's listening to this, I'm sorry. I just think you're really slow, <laughs> but what if she's like your fan? So she's listening to oh, everything. She's not a fan for sure. Especially the way that she responded to me. She was, it was like, it's, it's like the only, the only reason why I say that is because like her response, even after the apology was super disrespectful. She just didn't know. She was yeah. just super disrespectful. She goes, now that you're a better person, like she's speaking down to me, like I'm trash. So, she, so she's Tim's fan. Uh, she was. <laughs> she was but remember after her friend got an apology she said that her friend's trash and she moved on from her like that's how the word is toxic she is but either way um it was hard for me to do that apology thing you know it's because and i had to, i had to own up to the fact that i didn't understand oh uh, and it wasn't very empathetic towards that girl's feeling it was very hard for me to apologize and say i was wrong mm -hmm. um I was wrong for 50%. And I got to I gotta really just put that in because I refuse to take the joke back. But You were wrong? <laughs> the joke wasn't wrong, but her feeling terrible was. Yeah. And the fact that I didn't include her in the joke. So I'm once again, I'm really sorry for that, but fuck you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's just a difficult thing that a lot of us have to do when we're older. Um, and I think when you become older too, it's hard for us to be vulnerable, dude. Like it is because you don't want to feel stupid because you feel like yeah. you should know already, right? But I mean, I got I got DMs and messages from guys that are like, "Yo, man, I'm 33, and I fucking I'm think I, I thank God <laughs> that I just yeah." They're dog, like, I, I went I by this building called Chase, you know, and I was like, "What are these motherfuckers chasing, dog?" Because I was like, "Bro, it's a bank, dude. I don't know what you're talking about." They just didn't know, and I I feel like it's intimidating because when you get your you and know, they can like, do it in private, which is awesome, exactly. dude. Exactly, that's yeah. fucking dope, man. Yo, sign up for Jamalian Academy, man. If you don't know. Shit, motherfucker, you about to see my name on there with the alias. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, jamalinacademy.com, hey, baby. It's like Robert Wang. Yeah. Hey, bro. Uh, what is APR? <laughs> it's like, who yeah. the fuck is this guy? It's like that was me, Joe. <laughs> yeah, it all kind of came like all at once, too, because we recently released a JK News where um Tiff talked about how I helped her out with her like debt and everything yeah. too. And then we we came up with a plan and a strategy to get that all out. So, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty passionate about that. Like, it's really fun. So in order for me to create content, there has to be a purpose behind it, right? Yeah, like, I don't yeah. like just 
fucking around with the camera and, and, and although it's fun from time to time, like it gets to a point where you're just doing it now to meet a quota and there's no like heart behind it. I got to have heart behind yeah, what I do. Yeah, I got you. That's awesome, dude. I mean, the, for us too, I think a big part of what we're doing now and the reason why we've been able to really start pushing out content again is because that passion is back. Yeah. And it's hard for us not to do things with passion because I think it's very... People can see it and it's they could feel it. It's very tangible for our fan bases when we do stuff that's not oh, yeah. that's not our, we're not completely in it. And it's hard for me to put out stuff if I'm not happy about it because I mean nothing I put out to is ever perfect, right? There's always something that I hate about the stuff that I put out, but um, as long as my heart's in the right place, I'm mm -hmm. okay with putting it out. So uh, I'm glad that we're we're kind of getting back to that spot. Hell yeah, dude! Because we've yeah. been in a rut for the past three years. Man. Yeah, it's been kind of rough, man. But two that's years, three years. It's been it's like almost, almost three. three, right? Almost three. Yeah, it's it's been rough. Yeah, but hey, I think we're gonna come out of it and uh, turn into a phoenix. <laughs> come out of the fucking ashes and yeah, fucking I take mean, this that's, fucker down. I mean, that's why the podcast is still going strong. We're like almost this is like seventy something episodes in, and um, by the time this one comes out, oh shit! And you know, it's not easy doing something this consistent unless you like it. Yeah, I mean, shit, dude. Like we fucking miss you over at JK News, <laughs> but I could talk to you for hours, dude. Yeah. So this is to me not really work this is my this is my other jk news yeah <laughs> i just did a uh 20 percent of jk news here you know <laughs> you got the best cast member <laughs> <laughs> well guys uh that's it for this podcast man um great great suggestion for a topic uh i, I like topical things because we could really uh dig deep into a lot of this stuff yeah uh, shout outs to the girl that tried to cancel me um, <laughs> you know once again i'm really really fucking sorry that you felt that way but at the same time ooh, i hate your guts but i fucking apologize and uh, that's called the david so apology so you guys can catch us on uh spotify uh itunes podcast basically stitcher any audio platform out there make sure that you guys give us a listen to and any if you're not just put that bitch on repeat anyways because you know we're, we're, we're giving out some some gems and great conversation and the reason why we have this podcast is to basically accompany you throughout your mundane lives because sometimes you just need some people to talk shit and talk to you all day that's right and that's what me and joe are here for so we will see you guys uh every thursday and sundays we upload and uh catch you guys next time toodaloo Peace.